a new artist on the scene, new faces and voices. His name is Taylor Ixty. He's on the line, and I want you to meet him. Hi, Lee. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, here we are on a Saturday night, and you probably want to be out jamming, I think. Or, <laughs> or do you do you enjoy taking a break? Uh, I sure do. I uh, <laughs> I uh, probably take too many breaks when I get a chance. Um, uh, homework is is something that sometimes uh, gets put on second priority for me, stupidly. But uh, you know, I, I try to make it up eventually. But right now, I'm in uh, Virginia. I was just playing at a place called the American Theater, and um, uh, but so I'm just kind of taking a break and watching some Comedy Central. So. Well, that that's good relaxation, for sure. You're on campus at the University of Southern California, and do I understand you're a sophomore now? Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm a sophomore with a major in uh, jazz studies. And who are some of those uh, faculty members there that uh, are helping to stimulate you? There's a pianist I know there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Shelley Berg is my main professor, and I know you've had him on the show before. And uh, He's uh, just a brilliant, brilliant human being and, and wonderful uh, unbelievably kind and, and warm influence on uh, on me as a person and musician, and I'm uh, I really feel privileged to study with some of the people that uh, I get to study with over there, like uh, John Clayton, Alan Pasqua. Um, there's just a whole whole list of uh, just some really some some real giants, um, and uh, I feel really lucky to uh, be able to hang out with. Well, it seems to me that uh, you've been at this for quite some time. What is it? The age of four that you uh, you began to think about taking uh, piano lessons? Well, when I was uh, when I was really young, um, I, there was a lot of music playing in the house constantly, and I was uh, I just developed this ear for jazz and I, the fact that it was improvised, and uh, I didn't really like classical too much. I remember I remember when I was just a really little kid saying, you know, you know, someone asked me if I wanted to play classical music, and I said, I don't do dead guys, but <laughs> I've since then uh, learned the importance of classical music, and I've grown to love it, but um, at a really early age, I, I used to see my uh, sister play the, play the piano. Uh, she died when I, uh, when I was three. She was 17. She died of cancer, but she had the chance to play with the Doobie Brothers and uh, some other things, and the, she was a, just a great rock and jazz pianist, and I kind of wanted to follow in her footsteps. So um, the next year, when I was four, I, I kind of started taking some beginning lessons, and um, a couple of years later, really realized that uh, I liked the freedom of being able to improvise. So I switched to a jazz teacher, Randy Masters, who I had um, for uh, for a whole number of years after that. But that was kind of the start of my uh, learning to. Um, you know, learning the mechanisms of, of uh, the freedom of, of jazz. Well, certainly you, uh, at a very early date in your life, you also heard a, a pianist by the name of Art Tatum. That's true, actually. Um, and it wasn't until pretty uh, pretty much later on. I was, um, when I was really young, my, my main influences came from um, uh, contemporary jazz, actually, smooth jazz and it's uh, it's it's weird because a lot of people who uh, I mean right now I would define my style as straight ahead mixed with funk and a lot of other things but definitely not smooth jazz but when I was um when I was really little I mean that's just the main thing that I would listen to which is kind of you know backwards from a lot of other people who end up in smooth jazz or something like that but you know used to listen to straight ahead and then move to contemporary I kind of started um, with the contemporary smooth sound I, I liked that a lot when I was a kid. Um, one of my idols was David Benoit, and he has uh, just throughout my entire life been a, a great source of uh, support and a, a really good friend. And um, um, I still love his music, but uh, I kind of, uh, I you know, when I was 11, then I, I went to Stanford Jazz Workshop for the for the first year, and uh, uh, someone played me Art Tatum, and I'm like, okay, gotta start listening to more stuff here. <laughs> I, uh, when I learned that a piano player could do that, I was pretty much, uh, it got my hopes up to, you know, uh, that, hey, you know, anything's possible if that's possible, and uh, just started broadening my horizons from uh, from that moment on, and started listening to a whole lot of uh, 
more straight ahead jazz uh, players from different instruments. In you know, b b besides the piano, of course, I still always have listened to uh, Oscar Peterson, Gene Harris, Phineas Newborn, Benny Green, all these different greats of the piano. But um, also started listening to uh, greats on other instruments, and then uh, eventually expanded into listening to um, other genres of music too, like the most far out things that you could ever imagine from. Um, from Blackstreet to Nirvana to Rachmaninoff to anything um, that I could get influence in. But I think it really was just listening to Art Tatum that kind of opened me up to a lot of things. And uh, I still uh, I still listen to Art Tatum to this day, you know, along with everything else. Well, I hope that we can talk again in the near future here and uh, explore uh, more with you what you do and how you've done it and who, uh, who has been, uh, you know, lifting that spirit and in internal motivation that's built in there. Yeah. I, uh, um, I, I, I definitely have had different influences throughout time, personally and musically, and um, a lot of my personal influences have, have related to the music because they make me think of the music in, in a whole different way, such as Shelley Berg is doing right now. You know, one of the things he's, um, that he really opened my eyes to was... Uh, I, I'm really bad at memorizing words, but uh, I at least re now read the lyrics of every single song before I play it, because um, there's a whole other side to songs when you can do that, and um, I try to get that same feel, because I, I, I love making new arrangements of older songs or, you know, songs that a lot of people have done, um, but I also like keeping the same kind of vibe of, like, what the original song was about, even if it doesn't sound maybe even remotely similar. But, um, you know, he, he's Shelley's one of those people that really opened my eyes up in a lot of ways. I know we'll talk more in the future here, and, you know, you, you, you uh, referring to the lyrics, uh, the message of the, of the composition is fascinating because it seems instrumentalists of all stripes seem to pay very close attention to the words that go with that composition if it isn't a pure instrumental and i'm sure that's true that's true and you said you know in the in the instrumentalists that do you can really tell um you can really tell when the, when they're bringing out the melody that's supposed to be you know brought out when they're, when they're playing like a singer and you know also you know it's it, it, to me it's equally incredible when you know a singer can really sing as if they were an instrumentalist too and just have that musical knowledge that that's found there uh, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm always going to be exploring trying to bring that out further it sounds like you have a lot of uh, wonderful uh, surrounding for pure motivation from musicians to well just uh, the, the life and spirit of the west coast thanks okay, for taking time uh, thank you you're welcome <laughs>